This 65 reissue Princeton Reverb came in originally in April of 2021 and uh, left early in May. It had a recap and all the upgrades I've, I usually do in these. And at the time, it got a new pair of Electroharmonic 6v6s. Came back a year later. It had an arc in one of the 6v6s, so that was in 2022, also in May. So went out with this pair of uh, Apex matched 6v6 uh, GTs from Electroharmonics. And now two years later, it comes back, and the tube, which is right here, was severely red plating, as you can see in this little excerpt of a video that the owner sent me. Now, I've inspected this tube and looked very carefully. I don't see any physical damage to it. It might be okay, or it may be a fault in the tube. What I want to make sure is that there's nothing happening inside the amp which is causing that to red plate. Uh, it could just be a bad tube. It happens. It happens a lot, especially in deluxe reverbs, which typically have a higher plate voltage and screen voltage, which can be hard on 6v6s. But Princeton's are usually a little bit easier on them. So I'm going to go through here first and make sure that we have the same bias voltage on the grid of each output tube without a tube in place. This amp still has the original factory uh, coupling caps on the output of the phase inverter and the original 220K grid leaks, bias leaks. Uh, so it's possible that something went wrong. Maybe one of those caps is leaking, that you know, one of the resistors is failing, et cetera, et cetera. I want to verify that before I do anything else. It could also just be a bad tube. And I want to see what the operating voltages are to make sure the bias hasn't changed. Though I trust the owner in this case not to be randomly changing things. So let me power it on. And I'm going to check the voltage at pin 5 of each tube. Negative 41.3. Negative 41.3. That's with 120 volts coming out of the wall. So um, there's no leakage from the preceding stage, at least at initial power up. And the unloaded B plus, 472.5, these are 500 volt caps. Let me power it off, put the output tubes in place now that I know that there is a grid voltage. And uh, once these tubes are in place and it's powered up, unless it starts to cherry plate immediately, in which case I'll power it off. The next thing I'll check, uh, this amp still has the stock one ohm resistors from cathode to ground on each output tube. I'll just make sure that say, you know, maybe if this, if the cathode resistor for this tube failed, then this tube would be drawing twice as much current uh, as it's supposed to. And that could be a cause of that. The resistors measure fine when cold, but a cold measurement of a resistor is not always the actual performance. So the first thing I'm going to check when I power it on, unless it starts to red plate immediately, is I'm going to check the voltage at the cathode as it develops and i'll be watching that and then i'll check the plate voltage once it's stabilized comes up to the final operating uh, voltage so we'll know what the operating conditions are roughly here we go that's interesting as i vibrate the chassis that happens yeah it's that too bad 6v6. I figured as much, but I have to be sure of these things. So I'm going to take this out and put in a different pair of 6v6s and see how things operate at that point. All right, it came on fine with the uh, light bulb limiter. There's no nothing wrong with these tubes. And uh, I have now plugged it straight into the power supply, full 120 volts. Let's see where we're operating now. All right, the loaded B plus at the uh, reservoir cap is now 441. 15 milliamps and 18 milliamps on the output tubes. So not perfectly matched, but not terrible. And it's not drifting. At the grid, we've got negative 42, pretty much negative. It's really 41.8586. And the plate, 440, and the screen, 432. All right, so as you can see, the screen uh, voltage in a fender is not much lower than the plate voltage. 
though in the Princeton, there's less current than there is in the Deluxe Reverb and such. Uh, I really think that we just, a new pair of 6v6s away from this thing working just fine. And let's just test uh, really quick the existing preamp tubes. So I did change some of those two years ago. Pots. Everything seems okay, and the owner did not report any problems. Once I get the new output tubes in here and get them all set up, I will triple check the full operation of the app. But um, the tube is toast. And we've got pretty much the exact same situation with this Victoria Silver Sonic that was on the channel about six months ago, uh, reporting the red plating output tubes. Um, this before it had a whole bunch of things wrong in its wiring. You can see the previous videos, but uh, it's also possible that just the six V sixes uh, have failed within, you know, six months or whatever it is. These are some tongue soles. Again, the apex matched again from CE distribution. I have stopped getting these tubes with the apex matching from CE. I've had problems with them. I expect that's probably what I'll find here, but again, we're gonna ensure. So we're gonna pull this tube and this tube, power it on, on the current limiter. And I wanna make sure Huh. Not getting any lamp lighting up. Is that bulb bad? Yeah, that bulb's just toast, no problem. Okay, let's power it back up and I will confirm that we do have heater voltage. Yep. All right, take you out of standby. At the grid of this one, I've got negative 30.6. Grid here, I've got negative 30.6. The plate, 365.5, 365.5. Screen, 363.4. 300 volts, hmm, that's our problem. There's your trouble. Let's power that off. Wait for that voltage to dissipate. That's close enough for our needs here. I'm gonna measure the actual resistance of that resistor, the screen grid. Or 71.3, and the one that's acting up is measuring open. It's not fully open because the voltage is trickling through, but probably no current. So what would have been happening here is that this tube would have had no screen current, so this tube would have not have been operating. This tube would have been doing all the heavy lifting. I have that resistor out, and all but that four has been gone from the print. And up close, I can see that this thing has gotten very, very hot. It's even lost part of its coating. Now, this is a 3-watt, 470-ohm wire-wound Vichy. This thing is pretty much an amazing resistor for a screen grid. That means this thing had a lot of current before it failed and it failed open, which is good, it meant that it protected the rest of the circuit. So I love you, resistor. Thank you, dollar thirty resistor, for saving this amp. But it also means that uh, 6L6 that was on that socket is definitely not to be trusted. Now, I need to call the owner because I believe he said he changed out the tubes uh, because he had a matched quad. I think this is the second pair. So the damage was probably done by the first pair of tubes which would mean that uh, uh, this tube stopped operating because it was damaged. But then when he put in the second pair, this tube still didn't operate fully. The other one was getting all the current, so he would have had an ugly sound. The push-pull wasn't working. It was just be all push or all pull. So you'd have a low output distortion, really grainy sounding amp, uh, even though he put in good tubes. I'm gonna call him and confirm that. I suspect that if I change out this resistor, put those two tubes in this amp and verify the bias, he'll probably be okay. It was probably the previous tube, but I need to confirm that with him. All right, I've changed out that screen grid resistor for another three watt Vichy 470 ohm, and I've changed out the 
bulb in the lamp. Let's power this thing on. Remember, I am going currently into my current limiter, the light bulb. So this will be, just in case there's still a problem with one of these tubes. So this is the second set. They're probably okay. Letting it warm up. I have it in standby just to make sure there's no problem with the standby switch, though it's got a two watt resistor across the switch, so it still has a trickle of current even when it's off. It's a good Im implementation of standby if one must have standby with a rectifier tube. Let's take it out of standby. No mechanical noise. Sometimes, like you heard on the uh, Princeton earlier, when a tube goes, it gets very sensitive to any vibrations. And let's check and make sure that the grid isn't drifting. There are two causes of a grid to drift in an output tube. It can be a leak in the coupling cap of the preceding stage, or it can be internal leakage uh, from screen to grid or plate to grid within a bad tube. So here we've got, this all seems good. Uh, I'm gonna confirm that the bias is correct. Let me power it off first. Uh, this amp came in and went out with the first pair of these tubes and he ordered a match quad. And so these, the second pair of tubes in theory have, have the same current draw as the first set of tubes and therefore would not, would not need to be rebiased. But just in case, let me triple check that real fast. All right, these tubes are biased just about perfectly, about 54% idle dissipation. And uh, let's give a range of the voltages here for you guys. The bias at the grid is negative 30.2. The screen is 341. That's perfect for 6v6s. And the plate is 340.4. It's not unusual in some of these old tweed designs for the screen to be higher than the plate at idle. That changes uh, in operation. But what I do see in the back of this amp on the white speaker are some, some brown spots as if Coke or coffee splashed in there. I'm wondering if there was a liquid spill when the uh, first pair of tubes were in there and the tube, this tube here, was very, very hot and got splashed by something liquid. I'm not saying that happened and I'm not trying to shame the owner, but that would be a very logical cause of a tube lasting about six months. And if this had a, a liquid spill and arced or whatever, it could easily take out the screen grid uh, resistor, which failed and gave its life to save the rest of the amp. So we're in a good place now, but it's pretty unusual to see what looks to be liquid spill stuff on a speaker frame like that. Wipes up pretty easily. Maybe it's a red herring but maybe the owner will see that and say, oh, that was that night Johnny spilled his Coke everywhere or whatever. Uh, it's kind of sticky. That brown stuff was kind of sticky. It's on my fingers now. It really feels like the Coca-Cola residue. You know, it could be Pepsi, but it's the South. It wasn't Pepsi. Anyway, this has been the saga of two very different apps at very different price points with the same dread red plating output tubes. For slightly different causes, very easy solutions. The Princeton just needs new output tubes. This one needed new output tubes and the screen grid resistor, which gave its life in service of music. So there is no greater honor for screen grid resistors in my book. And that's one of the reasons we use them. So uh, if you have an app which red plates, first of all, don't use it until a tech looks at it, but it's not the end of the world. It's usually not anything too serious. So I hope this helps. Hope you found this interesting. And as always, thanks for watching.